In this episode of Be Hooked Knitting, I'm going to walk you through an easy knit scarf, the perfect project if you're just diving into the world of knitting. Before we get on with the tutorial, head over to BeHookedCrochet.com slash Beginner Knit Scarf to find the list of supplies you'll need to complete this project and to find the written instructions to supplement this tutorial. My name is Brittany and I'm so thrilled to have you here. Let's get started right after this. Like all patterns in knitting, we need to start with our cast on stitch. And for this pattern, we're gonna be working with the long tail cast on. And as the name implies, we need to start with a long tail. So there are more concrete ways of guessing exactly how long our tail needs to be. But in terms of just starting out because we're brand new beginners, we're just gonna guesstimate. We're gonna grab a little bit extra yarn, more than we need, and work from there. So just go ahead and start with a tail that's about 24 inches long. I've actually got a little bit more than that. It's totally fine. We just want to have extra. From here, what we need to do is, well, first establish that this is our tail back here and the yarn coming from this side is coming from the ball of yarn. Now I'm just going to loop that over and place it on my needle and then secure it with your finger. Now to do the long tail cast on, we need to first just pinch our fingers together like this, our thumb and our index finger, and go in between those two strands. Then with your free fingers back here, grab the tail and the working yarn and just hold on to that. Now continue holding on to the yarn on top of your needle and we're gonna open up our fingers just like this and then pull the needle down a little bit. So we have kind of this shape going on. Now I'm holding on to this because if I let go, I'm gonna completely drop it all together. Well, the first thing we need to do for the long tail cast on is circle our needle around and catch the strand that's right there in front of our thumb. Then we're gonna swing it back around the other direction and catch that strand on our index finger. Now from here, we need to pull the strand that's on our needle through our thumb. So I'm just gonna swing my thumb around and allow the tip of the needle to go directly in between those two strands. Now we can let that go. And if we just pull up the slack there on the bottom, there we have two stitches cast on our needle. So you're gonna to need to do a little bit of practicing with the long tail cast on. So let's see how to do that again. We're going to just drop our work down so we form this shape here, swing our needle around, grab the strand on our thumb, then swing it back around and grab the strand on our finger, and then release our thumb over the tip of the needle. Tighten things up, and there we have three stitches cast on our needle. We'll do that again, a little bit quicker this time. Catch the strand on our thumb, swing around to catch the strand on our finger, release our thumb over the tip of the needle, and tighten things up. Now for our scarves, what we need to do is cast on a total number of 25. So you're just going to count each strand that's on your needle. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to have a total of 25 before we can move on. Once you've finished your cast on, this is what your first needle looks like. You can go ahead and double count your loops. You wanna have a total of 25 so that our stitch pattern works out. Well, the other thing I wanna point out is what you see going on here. When you work the long tail cast on, we're sort of twisting 
the yarn. So this is something that you'll see pretty frequently. I wouldn't be alarmed by it. You can typically just sort of run your fingers through it and get the yarn to kind of settle down that way. And then we're ready to begin our first row. The first thing we want to do is turn our needle so that it's facing in this direction. Now this right here is my tail and this is the working yarn back here. Just go ahead and shove your stitches towards the front of the needle a little bit. You don't want them to fall over, but you do want to have easy access to them. So shifting them down always helps. So we're going to pick up our second needle and just isolate that first loop. You're going to stick your needle in that loop from front to back. Now here it is on the back side. So I've kind of gone in one side and out the other. And then just steady that in your two hands. Grab your working yarn and wrap it around the tip of the needle. I just like to secure that yarn in my hand. And I'm going to make sure that that loop doesn't fall off, but I'm going to slide the tip of my needle down. There that strand is, that wrap. I'm leaving that there. And then I can slide it over the tip of the needle. So that's our first knit stitch. We can just sort of pull on our tail to tighten that up. And we're going to knit the next stitch as well. So I'm just isolating that next stitch, insert my needle, knit wise. So from front to back, I'm going to take my working yarn and wrap it around the tip and then knit it off. So again, you can see I'm holding on to that wrap right here as I work the needle down and then work that loop off this needle here. So as I'm knitting along, I'm working the stitches off of this needle here and onto this one. Now let's try that again. We'll knit the next stitch. Wrap the yarn and knit it off. Knit the next stitch and knit it off. So row one is actually really easy for this pattern. We're gonna knit every stitch. So just what we've been doing here, we're gonna knit every stitch until we don't have any more loops remaining on this needle here. And here's what your work looks like after you have knitted all of the stitches off of this needle and onto this one. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is your very last stitch. You're going to see that it's going to be loose and open and look really sloppy. And that's just how things go. It actually will work itself out as you add more rows. You won't see this big opening here. So I wouldn't be too alarmed about that right now. Well, we're going to proceed now to row number two and what we need to do is just turn our work so i'm flipping it around like this and i'm set up to start knitting again well this time we've mastered the knit stitch so what we want to do is throw in another stitch so with knitting the knit and the purl make up primarily all of the stitches that you're going to do it's just how you arrange them that creates different patterns well, for this particular pattern, what we're going to do on row number two is knit the first two stitches. So this part's just a little review. You'll insert your needle knitwise, grab your working yarn, wrap it around, and knit it off. Now, since that stitch is a little more loose, that one tends to be a little difficult to work. It's a little bit easier to kind of let the, the strands fall off your needle there. Well, we're gonna go ahead and knit the second stitch. So insert your needle knitwise, wrap the yarn, and knit it off. So here's where the new stitch comes in. We're gonna do the purl stitch. 
Well, the purl stitch, just think of it as the complete opposite or reverse of the knit stitch. So you may not have noticed, but our working yarn has always been to the back here, and that's standard for a knit stitch. What we want to do for a purl stitch is bring it forward because we're doing everything in the reverse. So I'm just going to grab that working yarn and pull it underneath that needle. So then it's coming from the front here and I'm just gonna let it sit there. The other difference is the way we insert our needle into the stitch. Before we inserted it from front to back, this time we're gonna insert it from back to front. So I'm just taking this needle and inserting it into that next stitch, just like this. Then I can just hold that needle in place and wrap the working yarn around. And we're gonna knit it off in the same way, but it's in the different direction. You're gonna wanna keep quite a bit of slack on this working yarn so it doesn't slide over the tip of your needle. And just use your, your fingers, your thumb, to sort of, sort of shove it through and push it out the back side and then you can release that loop over the tip of your needle. So for this particular pattern, we're gonna work a knit stitch, two knit stitches at the beginning and two knit stitches at the end. But in between that, we're gonna alternate between knit stitches and purl stitches. So after we've just worked the purl stitch, our working yarn is coming to the front here. Well, for the knit, remember it has to be in back. So I'm just going to take it and just pull it towards the back so that I have it just situated right there. And then I'm gonna knit, so that means I wanna insert my needle knitwise, so from front to back. Then I'll just wrap the working yarn and knit it off. Let's see how to do the purl again. First thing we need to do is pull the working yarn in front, insert your needle purlwise, then wrap the yarn and work it off your needle. Wrap the yarn, knit it off, purl. So bring it forward. And we're just gonna repeat this until we have two stitches left on our needle. Then once you have two stitches remaining on your needle, we're gonna knit the last two stitches. So we're moving right along now to row number three. We're just simply going to turn our work and row three is a repeat of row one. So if you remember in row one, all we did was knit every stitch. Well, that's what we're gonna do for row number three. Just knit every stitch. After working up row number three, our scarf looks like this, and we can start to see the pattern take shape. So this stitch pattern is called the broken rib stitch, and you'll see that it kind of looks like a one by one rib, which is basically where we can see a knit stitch and a purl stitch and a knit, but because we have that row of just knits in between, we don't have a true rib, and so it's therefore called the broken rib. Now that we've seen all of the techniques that we need to know to work the scarf, we've learned the knit, we've learned the purl, we've covered row one of the repeat, and we've covered row two of the repeat. Well, what do you do next? 
This pattern is a simple two row repeat. So we're repeating rows one and two over and over until our scarf measures the proper length. After you've worked up a few rows in pattern, this is what it's going to look like on the right side of the work. Now here I've actually switched to some circular needles and you can do that. However, it's not required. You can, you can knit this entire scarf on your straight needle. I just have a couple of scarves going at the same time to film up this tutorial. So this is what it looks on the right side of the work. And this is what it looks like on the wrong side of the work. It's nice and bumpy. It has a really cool texture on this side. Now I have a couple of tips for you. When you're working on the right side of the work, so you're looking at this side right here, this is going to be a knit row. So I'm gonna knit every single stitch when I'm looking at this side of the work. And then when you're working on the wrong side or when you're looking at this side, this is going to be your more complicated row of the two. So these are just little visual cues because at any given time you could be distracted, you could lose your place, and then you have to know where to pick up in order to continue. So that is a visual cue for which row you are in the repeat when you're going from back to forth. But what about when you're working on this row and you're alternating between knits and purls and you get distracted? Well, you do have to be able to figure out what a knit stitch looks like and what a purl stitch looks like in order to continue the pattern. Let's have a real close look at our second row repeat. So I'm going to knit the first two stitches and you'll notice what side of the work I can see. This is the wrong side. So that's how I know that I need to be working with the knit purl repeat row. And then I'm going to purl one. So I'm pulling the working yarn forward and I'm purling. And then I'm going to knit one. So pull the yarn back and knit the next stitch. Okay, so this is the point that I really wanted to show you how to figure out what a knit stitch looks like and what a purl stitch looks like. So I know that this one's a purl because I just did that. I know this one's a knit because I just worked that. The best way to tell the difference between a knit and a purl stitch is to think of it like this. Purls have bars and knits have Vs. So what do I mean by that? If we look at this one, the one we know is a purl stitch, you can see this little bar that runs across the loop. Well, that's how I know it's a purl stitch. Now, if I look at this knit stitch, then this one has a V. So if I'm just looking directly below this loop that's on the needle, I can see a strand there and there making a V. Now don't get this confused with this guy right here. There technically is a bar there, but it's much lower. You wanna look at what's right up next to the needle. So there's a bar there on the purl, and then I have a V for the knit. Well, that's how you can tell the difference between the two. So if you got distracted and you had to put this down, then I can just look at my work and say, okay, well, I know this is a knit stitch, so that means I need to purl next. And I'll just go ahead and purl my next stitch. And then knit. And then we're just gonna repeat that until we are at the end of the row, until we have only two stitches remaining. When you have the two stitches remaining at the end, we're gonna knit both of those. Once you've made it all the way through your first ball of yarn, the next little technique that you'll need to pick up is how to add a new ball of yarn, or this also works in the sense of changing colors too. We're not actually changing colors for this particular pattern, but just know that the technique is the same. Now it doesn't matter if you're setting yourself up to work on the right side or the wrong side, we're going to work this technique no matter which section in the repeat you're in. So the first thing you want to do is insert your needle into the stitch to do the stitch that you need to do. Now in the case of both of our repeats for this particular pattern, we always start with a knit. So I've just inserted my needle knit wise, and then I'm just going to take my new yarn and just fold it in half and I'm leaving myself a tail that's about eight inches or so. And then I'm just gonna loop that and use that as my yarn over to work the first stitch. So just gather that up in your hand and just pull it through the stitch as if you were going to knit it like normal. 
Now we do have a lot of loose yarn here. So before we move on, we just wanna make sure that we're securing everything. So grab the tail from your old ball of yarn and then also grab the tail from the new ball of yarn. Just hold on to that. We'll, we'll deal with that here in just a little bit, but just make sure your stitches don't fall off your needle. Then I'm just going to knit the next stitch and just go ahead and knit one more so I have a little bit more work on my needles. And now what I can go ahead and do is just tie these two ends in a knot. Now from there, we can just go ahead and continue with our pattern. We're going to work two skeins of yarn. So you're about halfway through the project. And then we're going to wrap things up by demonstrating how to bind off and work our finishing touches. We're going to cast off our scarves on a number one row. And that's because our stitch pattern is a lot easier, right? Row number one is where we're just knitting all of the stitches. So we're going to knit every stitch, but we're gonna cast each one of them off as we go. So here's how we do that. We're first going to knit the first stitch like normal. And then we're gonna knit the second stitch as well. Now what we need to do is pass this first loop over the second one. And it's always a little bit tricky to get this down. Just insert your needle into the front side of that first loop. And then what I like to do is just use my fingers to make sure this loop doesn't fall off the tip of the needle. Work it down and through and around just like that. Now we're left with just the one loop on our needle and we can go ahead and knit the next stitch. Now when you have two loops on that needle, what we need to do is pass the first one over the second one. So this is just like we did before. We're gonna pass it over. And then repeat, we're gonna knit the next stitch. And then cast it off. knit the next stitch, cast it off. And we're just gonna do this until we only have one more loop remaining on our needle. Now once you've finished casting off all of your stitches, we can go ahead and trim the working yarn. You'll leave yourself a tail that's about eight to 10 inches long. And then all we need to do is pull the tail through that last loop on our needle. So your cast off edge should look something like this. We'll see just a nice pretty braid here on the other, on the right side of the work. And we're ready now to just weave in the ends. That's the last step we need to do to finish our scarves. So let's see how to do that. The first thing you wanna do is situate your scarf so that the wrong side is facing up. And then you'll just simply thread your tail on your darning needle. Now from here, all I need to do is find a, just a nice row of bumps and I'm just going to circle my darning needle around them. So insert it in always in the same direction, just kind of wrapping it around like this. And you can probably only fit six or seven little wraps around your darning needle. Well then just pull it through. I don't wanna to pull too tight because then we'll have just a, a crooked corner there. And then we can just circle back around. So I'm gonna drop down to the row below and just do the same thing. Just work my needle around those loops. And when you have this nice and secure, you can just trim it up. Do that same thing for your other ends and your scarves are complete.